Psalms chapter 2. We're going to look at Psalms chapter 2, and we're going to look at those who are ready versus those who are not ready. And this is going to focus on primarily the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're ready, then you're going to be coming back with Jesus Christ at the second coming. If you're not ready, then it's a good chance you could face Jesus Christ as he's coming back at the second coming. And he's going to be coming at you with a sharp two-edged sword. But number one, those who are ready get the last laugh. He who laughs last laughs best. People are mocking and making fun of God right now, making fun of him. They're laughing at him. But when he comes back, he's going to have the last laugh. Those who are ready get the last laugh, but the wicked men will be angry at God. They're not going to be laughing. Psalms 2, 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The heathen are presently raging against Jesus Christ. They hate the Bible. They hate God. And in the time of Jacob's trouble, they will curse God and blaspheme for the judgments that's come upon them because of their sin. They will rage and gnash with their teeth. The love of many will wax cold, as Jesus says in Matthew 24. Psalms 2, 2 and 3 says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. I have no problem believing in conspiracies but and believing that those in higher power have evil, bad motives. It's like that all through the Bible. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. They hate God. They are angry at God because they want to be the final authority. They aren't ready. They are unprepared to meet their God. They are unprepared for death, unprepared for the rapture, and unprepared for the second coming when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back with his saints. Psalms 2, 4 says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Derision. God has been highly offended by the sin of mankind since the fall. Since Adam and Eve ate the fruit and fell in the Garden of Eden, he's been highly offended, and he is long-suffering towards us, who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. One day his mercy and grace with the sinner will stop, and the Lord Jesus Christ will take out his vengeance on man during the battle of Armageddon. And God is going to laugh. When you're tossed into the lake of fire, God's going to laugh. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He's finally going to get that release. He's had this build up all this time. Everyone mocking him and blaspheming him. And people uh, killing people. And raping people. And take, stealing young babies. And killing babies. And sex trafficking young kids. God sees all this stuff going on. Uh, you turn on the news for a few minutes and you're stressed out. Imagine being God and seeing everything that's going on on the earth 24-7. It's going to be a great release at the uh, Battle of Armageddon when Jesus Christ comes back with a sharp to its sword and God's going to laugh. His wrath is going to be released. Psalms 2-5 says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. And vex them in his sword as pleasure. Imagine facing the Lord Jesus Christ at the second coming with thousands of his saints coming back with him. Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, and his eyes will be as a flame of fire. And he's going to have a sharp two edged sword that will proceed out of his mouth. This is where he will take out his wrath on man. The nations will be gathered together against him, and he will plow through them. He wanted them to gather together. That's because it'll be easier to knock everybody out if they're all together together in the same place. Psalms 2 6 says, Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. And the king is obviously the Lord Jesus Christ because he's king of kings and lord of lords. And he is going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem for a thousand years and rule with a rod of iron. Psalms 2, seven. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. 
And Jesus Christ is the only Son of only begotten Son of God. That word begotten is key. The new versions will say one and only Son in John three sixteen, but that's a lie because there's more sons of God, but Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son. The angels are sons of God, but they aren't begotten sons of God. We become sons of God at the new birth when we believe the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. And this is how you are saved from the wrath to come. If you want to be saved from the wrath to come, you're going to have to become a son of God. Psalms 2 8 says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You see, in Matthew 4, the devil offered the Lord Jesus Christ the kingdoms of this world in exchange for worship. But the Lord Jesus Christ turned it down because only God is worthy of worship. He said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy, Lord thy God, and on him only shalt thou serve. And Jesus Christ knew anyway that the earth would be in his possession eventually, very soon. Psalms 2 9 says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. The nations are going to gather together. And they're nothing compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Psalms 2.10 Be wise now therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the judges of the earth. If the nations want rain in the millennium, R-A-I-N, rain, so the crops will grow, they're going to have to go to Jerusalem and worship Jesus Christ. If they are wise, they will bow down. You see, everybody in the millennium isn't going to be for Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about there being enemies of God in the millennium. And that's who's going to be a part of that big army that Satan gets together at the end of the millennium that's as large as the sand of the sea. So he's going to have enemies. But if they're wise, they're going to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and kiss his feet. Psalms 2.11 says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son lest He be angry and you perish from the way when His wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in Him. The heathen are literally going to kiss the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the great white throne isn't the only place where wicked men will bow down and declare Jesus is Lord, even if they don't want to. They'll lick the dust whether they like it or not. All these people that kiss the Pope's feet today, uh, in the millennium, they're going to be kissing the Lord Jesus Christ's feet. And it's going to be well deserved. Uh, the Pope is a wicked man. The Lord Jesus Christ is a perfect man. He's fully God and fully man. He's the only one that's not sinned. He's the only one that's perfect. He's the only one that can save you from your sin. And if you're wise... If the, well, the people who are in the millennium that don't love God, that don't love Jesus Christ, if they're wise, they're going to bow down and kiss the feet of Jesus Christ. Psalms 2.11, serve the Lord with fear. And that's just not respect. It's knowing that if you don't do what God wants you to do, He can knock your head off. There's fear involved in that. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son. The Bible talks about the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, all the way through the Old Testament. Even though the Old Testament saints couldn't see a lot of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, we're living now with a full Bible. And we can look back at the Old Testament and see stuff that's talked about in the New Testament. The New Testament reveals the Old Testament for us. So it says, Kiss the Son lest you be angry. The Lord Jesus Christ got angry when he's here, and he's going to be angry when he comes back at the second advent. The book of Revelation says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. You're going to drink of the wine of the wrath of God if you're unprepared when Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent. Blessed are all are all they that put their trust in Him. Have you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? 
John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Are you trusting in Jesus Christ, or are you trusting in something else? If you want to go to heaven, trust Him. If you want to go to hell, trust something else. It's as simple as that. But this has been Psalms chapter 2 about those who are ready compared to those who are not ready. Are you going to be ready for the rapture? Are you going to be ready for death? Are you going to be ready at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you want to for sure be ready, get saved today before it's too late.